everyone welcome back to the channel my name is Vanessa and I am an author from Toronto Canada and I publish under the pen name and page I write a lot of mystery a lot of fantasy um, a lot of spooky paranormal um, both in the young adult and adult genre and I have been both indie and traditionally published so what I like to do on this channel if this is your first time tuning in is kind of chat about everything I've learned so far all the lessons that came up tips that I have from personal experience um, things that I like things that I enjoy um, things that help me with my writing uh, take you behind the scenes vlogs all that stuff pretty much whatever makes up my life as a creative entrepreneur and as an author who does this for a living I try to stuff it into this channel um, so hopefully that sounds like something that's up your alley and if it is then make sure that you are subscribed and that you hit the bell notification so you don't miss any upcoming videos now it's been a while since we did this and since we sat here um, and I wanted to um, do another video like this because I kind of uh, want to make sure that we get a variety of things here um, I have been away so we have missed two weeks of videos i'm sorry i missed you guys uh but i needed the break i definitely needed um, a little bit of time to myself with my family uh, we went away um, we went to New Brunswick um, if you are familiar with um, Canadian geography it's kind of like a, a maritime thing uh, they, we were in a cottage with a bunch of family um, there's a few cottages all around we do try to do this every year every other year uh, but it's a great time the thing about it is there's no working when you're there there's a lot of people I think we had close to 60 relatives there this time around the soul my husband's side um, it was the first time that we took our toddler and she loved it there's a lot of mosquitoes so we all came back with bites but it was totally worth it um, and there is no internet there's no wi-fi there um, it's a cottage in the middle of the field next to the water um, and so Working is not an option, which is really great, and I really needed it. And I could have pre-filmed videos and done all of that before, but I kind of wanted to take like a real true break without having to promote it or tell people about it and send emails or anything like that. And I also have books due, right? And that's what this video is about. So I want to talk um, about, and this is um, actually a question that came up on one of my other videos, which by the way, if you have something that you want me to talk about, make sure you comment those because I do keep a list of everything everybody asks for. Um, and one of the questions was, was for me to talk about how I balance working on multiple projects, writing projects at the same time. So um, if you are not aware, I um, have a publisher that I publish my books with um, that I am contracted for. So there's contract that renews for every project depending on how I pitch it. Um, and I also am currently working on kind of like a passion project for myself, which is uh, one that I think I want to try to shop around for an agent for to see if I can get an agent interested in it. Um, and if I don't, then I'll figure out other um, ways to, to get this book out there. Uh, but I also ghostwrite. So I ghostwrite cozy mysteries and mysteries and thrillers. Um, and so that's a lot of writing projects to, to have and a lot of times they end up coinciding so right now i have wrapped up a ghostwriting project but i still have a book that is due to my publisher that is coming up in the fall um due to the publisher not coming out i have another book coming out in orchard hollow the last book of the series but um, there's a book that's coming out in the fall and then I'm also working on this hard project that I have passed the midpoint point on um, and I would like to have the, the, the first draft kind of finalized within the month. So that's two projects that I'm working on simultaneously and they're both very different. One is a cozy mystery. Um, like an adult cozy mystery and the next one is more of a gothic romanticy with like a murder mystery center um, I'm not it I'm writing it as adult ish adult adjacent kind of the same way that um, something like Belladonna was adult adjacent um, so that is those are the two projects they're very different they require different skill sets different writing styles different setting up of the project different everything um, and so I want to talk about how it is that they do that without losing my mind <laughs> and how I manage to actually bring multiple projects to completion because a lot of times what happens is when you start more than one project neither one of those gets finished <laughs> because we start getting confused and things come up and it's easy to lose yourself when you have when you're juggling all the balls right 
So I have a few tips for you guys on how I do this. And a lot of these tips, so um, they, while they might be relevant to writing projects, they are because I use them in writing projects. They actually come from different uh, productivity uh, mindsets and different productivity tools that I have used in the past. So prior to my life, what I am right now, prior to this way of living that I have working for myself, I was a senior director for um, larger companies and I ran creative teams. And so I would have to organize many projects, more than one or two, um, many multiple projects across multiple platforms, across multiple team members. And that was essentially my job was project management. And so I had to use a lot of different productivity tools and I have become very familiar with different productivity tools. I've taken many productivity courses. I've tried different things like Asana, Trello, all of these things. Um, and, and so I've used things that they've I've learned from that experience and I brought that into my individual writing projects. And so some of the main tips, I think I have eight total for so far, uh, but the first one, and this is a very important one, um, is you have to learn how to prioritize your writing projects. So what do we mean by that? Everything might be fine. There's always a, uh, the grass is greener and you always have that shiny new idea and you want to prioritize that one. But I want you to take a step back and think of this strategically. So when I have multiple writing projects that uh, I am taking on, I prioritize them based on not workload, um, not what I'm passionate about, but I have to think strategically and I think about which project is the one that is more financially beneficial because at the end of the day um, it, writing is a passion and I love it but it is also my job it is what pays the bills um, and so I have to think about so if ghost writing is a bulk of money that um, I will get right away the faster that I write that the faster that I get paid so that will probably take number one priority However, um, if I have projects due to my publisher um, and if we are really pushing books and those payments per month are going up consequentially regularly, then maybe I will prioritize that project before. And I will kind of go scale by scale. And at the end of the day, it's unfortunate, but the hard projects like this Gothic Romanticy, which I haven't signed with anybody yet, I haven't been paid for any of the work that I do, that usually kind of goes lower on the list. Um, I don't not work on it, obviously, but it goes lower on the list. So currently, to put it in the example, I have a draft that's due to my publisher coming up in a few months. Um, and then I'm hoping to finish... Uh, bone to bone, which is the, the working title. It, it's not even close to the real title, uh, but, but what I'm calling it. Uh, so bone to bone is getting, um, finished the first draft so I can start editing it because I want to start um, pitching this to agents in the new year. I don't want to, I want to avoid the Nano Nanaimo December craze and kind of go for January. Um, so that's the plan. No one's paid me for this project yet. And so my priority absolutely, as far as writing is concerned, has to be with the book project that is due to the publisher. Um, and so that's number one priority. And so I know when I'm delegating time, so next point, that's the project that's going to take up the better time slot of the day. So the next point is you find a good schedule. You just have to figure out a schedule that works for you. Um, you might have a full-time job that you're doing and then you're also trying to write on the side or you're working e like evenings and you can write during the day or work during the day, you can write evenings and weekends, etc. Find a schedule that works for you. For me, what works best is um, usually in the morning, my brain is clear. And so anywhere up to about like 11, 12 o'clock is my prime ideal writing time. Um, and so that priority project will usually get slotted in in that time. Now, I can't write back to back. Nobody can write back to back. I totally don't recommend that if you're doing multiple projects that you are writing back to back. If you have a full day schedule to play with, um, write at a certain time, do something else, a whole bunch of other stuff, and then write again. So maybe the way you divide up your projects, if you have a full time job, is you wake up like a half an hour or an hour earlier than you normally would and you write if that's your ideal writing time, you write your priority project then. Then you go to work, have your dinner and come back. And in the evening, you take a half an hour or an hour and you write your secondary priority project, the one that's not priority, that. Um, and then on the weekends, maybe you can do one day for each, you know? Um, and so that's kind of how you would delegate it. But for me, in the mornings up to about 12-ish um, is ideal. And so my priority project gets slotted in there. Then I will spend a few hours of the day usually working on things like cover design. If I have uh, developmental edits for clients that I have to do, I have coaching clients throughout all this. So sometimes coaching calls will, will not sometimes, pretty much daily coaching calls will um, creep in because I do coach authors on 
their books. Um, and so I usually have two or three calls per day, depending. Um, and so those calls will creep in kind of and pepper in throughout. Um, I will have um, edits and read throughs to do for those coaching clients. Um, and so those will kind of get handled in that middle portion of the day. And then around like um, four o'clock, let's say three thirty, I will sit down and I will delegate an hour or so to the project that wasn't a priority. So in this case, it's bone to bone. Um, I try to wrap up my workday by like five thirty ish, um, because I do start um, around like ten thirty, and so I do have slightly shorter work days. But I work for myself, so often I eat at my desk, so I don't take lunch, and it kind of makes up the difference. Um, I do have a toddler, um, and so with all of that said, I usually my work hours are not the eight hour shift that that you would do if you were working for someone else i usually work somewhere between four to six hours a day unfortunately depending on when i start um but if i'm doing a six hour day then i have to make sure that at least half of that is delegated to writing um so you have your schedule and then so now what, what's the next tip that they have um i often recommend for people who are working on multiple projects and this is what i do for myself too is i stagger the type of stages of work um and the work type the workload type that i am doing between the projects so I often try not to write the first draft of both projects at the same time because that can get exhausting. It's a lot of words um, in different genres usually um, that you have to pump out in a day. Um, and so I try to stagger that. So right now, Bone to Bone is getting finished up, right? So I'm kind of like on the end stages of the draft. Um, but instead of drafting the project that I have due, and this is like a new one I haven't been announcing it yet, but because we haven't done anything for it yet. Uh, but instead of uh, drafting that project, what I'm actually doing while I'm drafting Bone to Bone, my secondary project, I am plotting and brainstorming and developing the world and doing all of that for the priority project. Um, and then when I finish plotting the priority projects, I'm going to do a switch, right? So I'm going to be working on drafting the priority project uh, but i'm going to be in the editing stages of bone to bone and so you don't want to mix up like you don't want to be editing everything at the same time that's a lot of editing and like it just gets so tedious and you don't want to be drafting everything at the same time um, you want to at least stagger the draft numbers so if you're on draft one of one project hopefully you're on draft three of the next one if you do it that way um, so stagger the work type and then you want to really really think before you sit down to write really really nail down your theme your mood your character voice for every single project because the worst thing that can happen is your two projects or your three projects or your four however wild you want to take it but they start blending together you don't want this to become a mishmash because then it's going to be hard for you to switch between one and the next and what you'll end up doing is writing the same project twice basically <laughs> we don't want these books to repeat especially if they're different genres so make sure that you have a very distinct mood and theme and character voice developed for every single project before you start working on them because that's going to help you um, make like a concrete line in the sand <laughs> of uh, essentially like what every single one is um, something that also helps me is using different things and materials and different things to trigger the mindsets, these moods and these themes and this character voice of each project. So um, some people use candles when they write. So I would recommend you find a candle that matches the mood and theme of every single uh, project that you have. And you light that candle when you sit down to um, write the project. For mood boards were great. You could pull up a mood board for every single project and put it on your computer um, or like tape it up on the wall next to you. So you're kind of in that mindset of that specific project when you're working on it. For me, it's coffee cups. <laughs> I'm sure if you are on my social, you've seen me post a lot about different coffee cups, but I like to get themed cups for every single project that I work for. A lot of times it's something from the book. If I already have designs for it, like if the cover is done for it, um, if I have elements that might work for it, I have those specific shops or logos that I could pull and put a coffee cup uh, for this project that I have due um, to the publisher. Um, this is a very specific type of product. So it's so hard not to share, uh, but I promise I will soon because <laughs> it's such a, oh, I love it. It's just, it's going to be so fun. Um, but there's like a specific cool logo design that I um, got to work on for it uh, just for myself. And I might actually use it. Um, I, I might pitch it as the, the headers for the book. So we'll see what they say, uh, but it might be really cool. Uh, but I put that on a cup 
right? I got it custom made. So a cup has arrived. So now when I'm plotting and working on it, I have coffee from that cup. And then when I switch to bone to bone, I have like a vintage um, shaving mug from 1894 that I'm using as a cup because this is very Gothic Victorian feels. And so this feels really Gothic and Victorian to me. And so I know when that cup comes out, my mindset immediately switches. So I go from like modern day um, cozy mystery, paranormal cozy mystery, and that whole world, um, I switch over into this like gothic, dark Victorian kind of mindset with the different cups. And that works to trigger me. Um, so something like that really helps kind of separate your brain because you really want that distinct separation. Um, another thing you want to do um, is set different expectations for yourself. So make sure that you know what you're expecting from this project. Um, if you have dates in mind, set those dates and try to stay on them. Um, this goes back to finding your good schedule, um, but also set clear expectations. So don't say I'm going to finish writing two books in a month. If you have never written two books in a month before, <laughs> um, if it takes you four months to do draft one of a book, set that expectation. And so multiply that. So give yourself a buffer. You're going to be writing them at the same time, but you also will have less time to do them. So maybe it takes you eight months to complete these two projects as opposed to the four months that you're used to. Set your expectations very, very clearly um, and make sure they're somewhere like you wrote them down so you can always reference and go back to them because sometimes we try to push ourselves too much and that brings us into a burnout. It gives us bad words that we put on a page that need too much editing later and it makes us not want to finish the projects that we started. And with that in mind, with expectations in mind, the next thing you want to do is uh, be ready to pivot. Things come up. <laughs> Life is life. <laughs> it gets hectic. It throws things in your way. Um, I have recently like given myself all this time and I knew I was going to finish a lot earlier, but then I booked extra cover projects. I have booked, I think currently I'm on the roster of like 14 coaching clients and I'm supposed to have only five. Um, I, uh, I have booked last minute vacations to colleges with my family, you know, because I don't want to miss out on like having good times with my child while well, she's like at a certain age when it is informative and important for her that I be there. And so um, things do come up. Um, and because of that, I had to pivot. So I had to change my expectations. I had to go back and say, okay, so I was supposed to be done with bone to bone by August so that I could just not have multiple projects. But now look at that, we're pivoting and now we're working on two projects at the same time again. Um, and so now I need to pivot that. So that means that I am giving myself a breather on bone to bone because again, it's not a priority project. And I am starting the priority project a little bit earlier than I intended to start, but stretching out my timelines. So get ready to pivot and move things around. And if you have more than two, maybe that pivoting means that one takes a backseat for now and you balance only two projects. Or maybe that means that you don't balance two projects for a month or two um, and you just work on one and really push yourself through it. Just figure out what works for you and pivot that way. Um, and then the final thing, and I left this for final, even though <laughs> it is pretty important and it could probably be one of the first things that I talked about, but I only left it for final because not everybody works in the same way. But for me, what makes it um, possible at all <laughs> to finish uh, multiple projects while I'm working them at the same time is that I plan them ahead of time. I plot heavily. Um, I have every chapter laid out. I have a roadmap to follow so that when I sit down to write each chapter, I don't waste time brainstorming, thinking, figuring out where I go, writing myself into a corner, going forward from there, editing, moving stuff around, making notes, you know. Um, when my drafts are done, they are very, very clean. I edit as I go also. Uh, but the plotting and the planning ahead of time, and that is what really helps me. So if you are a plotter, great. <laughs> this is right up your alley. Uh, but I left it for last because some people are pantsers and they don't like to plot. Um, and so I would recommend if you are a pantser um, that you, you don't plot the same way that I do, but maybe once a week you sit down and you kind of figure out the chapters that you're going to write for every single one of the projects that you work on and you stick to that. And then the next week you sit down and you do it again. So maybe work like one or two chapters ahead or whatever it takes, but um, try to figure out a plan for yourself. That way you don't write yourself into a corner. And also that way, when you sit down, um, you already have something to work off of. I know people who actually write the first paragraph of the next chapter they're supposed to work on the next day, the night before. That way, when they sit down the next day, 
they already have something to start from. They're not looking at a blank page. That is something that could work for you if you are a pantser. Um, that is a sort of planning um, that is not like a full plot ahead. And that's kind of like really what I have. Um, essentially, it's a lot of organizing. It's a lot of juggling time. It's a lot of figuring stuff out before you start working. Um, it's balancing your schedule. It's it's sticking to it, um, and really treating this like a like a schedule, like a like a meeting you have with yourself when you sit down to write. But the more planning that you can get ahead of time, the easier it will be for you to do your project. So that like figuring out your priorities, doing a little schedule, seeing where you are as far as like the workload type goes, um, figuring out the world, the themes, all of these things, everything that we've talked about will come before you even sit down to write. And I find that the more work that I do um, kind of on the like the ahead of time basis, um, the easier it is to actually balance these projects. So um, if you were the person that asked this question, I hope that you watch this and that it answered the question for you. Um, if you have any more questions about it, please definitely let me know. Um, otherwise, I really hope for anybody who's working on multiple projects that this was useful for you. Um, and stay tuned uh, for next week. I think I'm going to do an author chat video. We haven't done that in a bit. But we'll do an author chat video where I can kind of catch you up in detail on everything that's going on. Because again, I've got stuff coming up. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> so let's talk about that. That. Um, I'm going to also have a uh, what's the day today so yeah so we'll, we'll chat next week because there's also going to be a release that's coming up to come, creeping up shortly um, the release is for the final book double long murder for the final book in my orchard hollow this is the first book but it's the uh, the final book um, in that series is coming out and so we can chat about that as well and all my plans for wrapping up the series so that said I hope that you guys stay magical and I will see you next week for another video. Bye.